In this lesson, we're going to learn about data visualization and data exploration. So why visualize our data? Well, graphs and charts are incredibly powerful and very useful in being able to understand what it is that we're actually dealing with. Because there's actually only so much that you can learn from looking at a table of numbers. Very often, you want to put it up on a chart so that way you can spot problems, you can spot outliers, you can spot trends, and you can spot patterns. Pictures are incredibly informative. So let's create this chart in something called Jupyter Notebook. Head on over to a website called jupyter.org. If you scroll down here, then there's a button where it says try it in your browser. And this will take you to jupyter.org slash try. I'm gonna put a link to this very site in the course resources. So you'll find it there as well. Once you're here, click on try Jupyter with Python. And after a little loading time, then you should be dropped off on a screen like this. Now, if you didn't end up on the page that I showed you just now, and instead you got this message, then you can do one of two things. Either you can skip ahead and see how we can install Jupyter, or you can wait a few minutes and just refresh. And that should drop you off somewhere like this. So why do I like Jupyter and why are we using it? Well, this is an incredible tool. It's very powerful, it's very easy to use, and it provides instant feedback when we're writing our Python code. Jupyter works on something called cells, and you can execute the code in these cells individually. Let me show you what I mean. So with this little plus sign here, you can insert new cells. And if you type something in one of these cells, say five plus five, and hit shift enter on your keyboard, then this cell will execute and you'll see the output below the cell. Alternatively, if you don't wanna use the keyboard shortcut, there's also this run button up here. So let me just change this to five plus six and press run. Then you'll see this cell being executed and the output being updated. The other reason I really like Jupyter Notebook is because it's fantastic at allowing you to present information because the cells are actually all not created equal. Some of these cells only present you with information like these ones, and these are so-called markdown cells, and other cells are actually cells that expect Python code, like these ones. And you can see this in the difference in the formatting. Now let me show you how to start a notebook of our own. If I click up here, where it says Jupyter, just on the logo, I could take into something that looks a little bit like a Windows Explorer or Mac Finder. I've got folders and files on here, and here I can click on New, and say new notebook, and I can specify that I want a new Python 3 notebook. And this will open a new tab in my browser with a fresh notebook that we can use for this project. So let's give this notebook a name. Instead of it being called untitled, let's call it linear regression. And then we'll hit rename. And if you change tabs back to the first tab here, you can see this notebook appear in green right here. So how do we get our data from our spreadsheet into our Jupyter Notebook? Well, there's a small button here called Upload, and if you click on it, then you can upload a CSV file to Jupyter. Now, you can either download your data from the Google Sheet in a CSV or comma-separated value format, but what I'd recommend is to download the cost underscore revenue underscore clean dot CSV file that we've provided in the course resources. This way, we can ensure that we're all working from the same clean data and there's no accidental typos. So just select this file and hit open and then confirm your upload. You should then see the CSV file appear right here. So now we've uploaded it successfully. Heading back into our Jupyter Notebook, we now have to get the data from this CSV file into our notebook. In other words, we need a way of accessing the data in the notebook itself. The problem is, is that our notebook is currently blank. It doesn't know how to do anything yet. So we have to give our notebook some sort of functionality. And we can do this by accessing code that other people have already written and taking advantage of that. Other people's Python code is bundled up in something called a module. And in order to use a module in our notebook, we have to import this module. The first module that I'd like to introduce to you is called pandas. So if we write import pandas in this very first cell and hit shift enter on our keyboard or press this little run button, then we've accomplished just that. 
Now our notebook has all the functionality that the Pandas module has. Pandas is one of the key modules for data science, and we will be using it a lot on this course. It's incredibly useful for manipulating and analyzing data. And the Pandas module can already help us because it knows how to read CSV files. So let's use it to get the data into our Jupyter Notebook. If we write pandas dot read underscore CSV, and then we open a pair of parentheses, then we can supply the file name of our CSV file between these two single quotes. Our file name, if you recall, was cost underscore revenue underscore clean dot CSV. And you can see that right here. So I'm just going to copy this and then paste it in between these two single quotes. The key thing to understand here is that we're accessing the ability to read CSV files from the pandas module using this dot notation. But now that we've read our CSV file, we need to store the data from this file somewhere. So we need some sort of object that holds on to our data, like a container. And we can create this simply by writing data equals on the left hand side and then having pandas.readcsv on the right hand side. What this will do is it will create an object called data, which then gets a value, the data that's contained inside the CSV file. And if we run this cell, we can actually look at it. So let's click run and then write data and then just hit run again. And here what we should see is all the data points and all the information that was previously stored inside our CSV file. The great thing about this is now we have an object in our notebook that we can use to analyze and explore our data. Let me show you what I mean. So instead of printing out all these 5,000 rows below the cell, what we can do is we can put a dot after our data object and tell it to describe itself. So with data dot describe and two parentheses at the end and hitting shift enter, we get the following output. We get some summary statistics on the data that's in the two columns, our production budgets and our worldwide gross. We get to see how many entries were in our data frame. We get to see how many entries were in these columns. In this case, we have 5,034 entries. The reason that these numbers look a little bit funny is because they're in scientific notation. So for example, 5.034 E3 equates to 5,034. And 3.29 E7 equates to 32 million. So 3.29 E7 or 32.9 million is actually the average production budget of all the films in our data set. And this is what we see here labeled as the mean. But not only do we get the number of entries and the average of the values, but we can also see a number of other statistics like the minimum value, the smallest value. So the smallest production budget was $1,100. And we also see the smallest amount of worldwide gross revenue, which was $2,600. So now we've got all our data in one place. We have it all stored inside an object called data. But let's separate it out. Let's separate out what we're using to make our prediction, our production budget, from what we're going to predict, namely our gross revenue. And the reason we're doing this is because we're preparing our data for the next steps. We want to be able to create some charts and we want to be able to create our linear regression. So it's going to be very, very nice to stay organized and have our features separated from our target. So now come down here to a new cell, and I'm gonna create two more objects. One is gonna be called capital X, and the other one is gonna be called lowercase y. Now, our X is gonna hold on to our production budgets, and our Y is gonna hold on to our revenue. So we're using that equal sign again, just as we did up here. So now we have to think about what should these two things be equal to? What kind of object should our X and our Y be? At this point, I'd like to introduce you to one of the main workhorses of data science, the pandas data frame. You can think of a data frame as a very powerful spreadsheet, like a spreadsheet on steroids. So the question is, how do we get hold of a pandas data frame? Well, we can come back up here, 
where we're importing pandas and we can import the data frame from pandas. So from pandas import data frame. Now, if you hit tab on your keyboard, then Jupyter Notebook should actually autocomplete some of the code for you. That way you won't make a typo here with a say a lowercase f or something. Autocomplete is incredibly useful for avoiding these small mistakes. Now we can come back to our X and our Y. Here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new data frame. And this data frame is gonna contain our production budgets. So X is gonna equal data frame, open parentheses, data comma columns is equal to square brackets. And in the single quotes, we're gonna provide the column name. The column name for our X's is gonna be production budget USD. So you can just copy this from the spreadsheet or you can type it out as long as you make sure that the spelling matches exactly. And then your line of code should look like this. So what are we doing here? We're creating a new data frame from our raw data, which we've got here. And we're selecting a single column from this data, namely the production budgets. And that's how we're splitting up our data frame here for our X's. Now at this point, I'd like to throw over a challenge to you. I'd like you to pause the video and split up the data for our Y's. Can you create a data frame just like this, but instead of grabbing that first column, can you grab the other column, the worldwide gross, and then store this information as our Y? I'll give you a few seconds to pause the video and give this a go. All right, here's the solution. You can actually copy the line above and paste it below and then just replace the column name with the column name for the worldwide gross revenue. So in this case, you need to take this column name here and add it between the single quotes inside the square brackets. Having done this, we've separated our data. We've created two new data frames, one called capital X, which holds on to our features, and one called lowercase y, which holds on to our target. So let's execute the code in the cell and see what happens. So if we click run here, then what you see is that we actually get an error. We get something that says name data frame is not defined. And the reason we're getting this error is because our notebook actually doesn't know what a data frame is. But why is that? If we go up here, we can very, very clearly see that we're importing the data frame from pandas. The reason we're getting this error is because we've modified the cell, but we actually have not run this cell yet. In other words, we have to select this cell, run the cell, and it's at this point that our notebook knows about the data frame. So if we come down here to where we're creating our X and our Y and run the cell again, this error will disappear. The code will now execute successfully. So now that we've successfully separated out our data, I'll see you in the next lesson.